Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Porky in Egypt, released in 1938. It's the 220th in the series and it's directed by Bob Clampett. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 2 DVD set, the Platinum Collection Volume 2 Blu-ray set, and on the Porky Pig 101 DVD set, and I have links below to all those sets. Now sadly I can't show you the full cartoon here due to copyright, but in case you haven't seen it, it's actually very straightforward. So you've got Porky, he's in Egypt, he misses out on going on this tour, so he goes out with his camel into the desert, he gets lost, and the two pretty much go crazy, and that's pretty much it. So what you're going to see as part of this review is a re-edit of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take it down. Thanks to my good friend Blue Genocide for helping me re-edit that. And then you hear some new thoughts from me and you also hear a portion of the Bob Clampett retrospective video we did. So yeah, grab some popcorn and enjoy. <laughs> I do like this gag though, just to complete <laughs> clamp type joke. It's it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely love it. So yeah, you know, Bob's clearly establishing the entire you know, entire, the location, if you will, based on the fact that uh, yeah, um, these locations would be seen as, you know, completely exotic. So this does contain a few stereo Arab stereotypes in the beginning, but once we get past this initial bit here, um, the cartoon gets not only funny, but it also gets very, very surreal. It's, it's absolutely um, incredible. I've always loved this bit here with the sun, just showing how, how literally hot it is. It's so ridiculous. It's one of my favorite um, bits of uh, animation of all time. And, you know, here in Australia, summers get incredibly hot. And, yeah, this is pretty much the visual that uh, comes to mind. <laughs> When we have our uh, really hot summers here, just wow, absolutely, absolutely crazy. Oh dear. So this breakdown that the camel does is pretty much inspired by the film uh, The Lost Patrol, and it's just crazy just how he, this camel, just even quotes from Ru Ru uh, from um, Kipling, um, uh, the poem called Boots, and this would have been also a treat for um, Trek Brown because there's all these wonderful sound effects all over. Not to mention just the brilliant, brilliant acting. It's not not as surreal as say Porking Wacky Land, but you know what? This that scene just absolutely just steals it. You know, the camel is the real star of this cartoon. Porky's just you know he's just there. He's the star. So those are my original thoughts. So rewatching it again, I've noticed a few extra things. So first up is that it's my understanding, and I'm I'm not Muslim, but. It's my understanding that gambling is actually not really permitted in the Muslim world. If I am mistaken there, please let me know. And of course, here's another great gag of Clampett actually showing us something that's against expectation, you know? Yeah, needles are fine, but fire? Nah, of course not. Yeah, and as my good friend Blue Genocide pointed out, you know, there could have been, a, I guess, a reference to the actual movie, The Mummy, starring Boris Karloff in this one, but that's okay. It's not really that necessary. So what I've noticed in this short is that this is the start of the trend that Clamper would end up doing, and that's, of course, get Porky out of the way so you can focus on other wacky characters. And clearly here, the wacky character is the camel. So you see the camel go crazy in this wonderful animation here. I don't know how they've done this effect, but hey, it must have been cheaper because, you know... Schlesinger was a notorious cheapskate, but yeah, with the focus on the camel here, this is the start of Clampett just getting Porky out of the way for other characters. Now, putting aside the actual man himself, uh, John Chris Lucy actually cited this as one of the shorts that inspired Ren and Stimpy, and well, if you're a fan of the show like I am, you can definitely see the comparisons of what was done on the show compared to what was done in this short, and... You know, I like both for different reasons. 
Now, this is Lou Lear, who had the trademark saying, monkeys are the craziest peoples, which in this case is camels are the craziest peoples. And you hear Hi-O Silver, which is a reference to the Lone Ranger, a subject that Clampett himself would take on in a future short, which I can't wait to get back to. This party is probably my favourite bit of animation in the whole short, where we see him running on his humps. Now, at the end, where we see Porky go crazy, he's wearing a Napoleon hat, and it was seen that if you wore a Napoleon hat, it's like a symbol for insanity. So, in other words, if you believed you were Napoleon, you were insane, and, well, I guess you still are. As we see also a Daffy Duck dance as well. So now you're going to hear a sample from the Bob Clampett retrospective video that was done. Given that some of you don't have time to watch a bigger video, at least in these shorter videos, you can watch a sample. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. <laughs> this one, look, um, even if you're not interested in the beginning or whatever, and that, like, it's got the best, I guess, psychodrama, if you want to call it that, I don't know, where, where the camel's just going absolutely nuts in the desert. It's, wow, that, that just blows my mind every time I see it. And putting aside John Kay as a person, look, he basically said Ooh. that that's what influenced him uh, towards Ren and Stimpy. But Fox, you've got plenty more to say about uh, Porky in Egypt. What are your thoughts on it? I remember before uh, becoming a Looney Tunes fanatic, I uh, knew just a bit about Warner Brothers cartoons and I knew the um, the name of Tex Avery. Uh, and I knew a few of his cartoons. They were wild. They were very insane. And then uh, there was this disc on the uh, Golden Collection. It was all uh, devoted to Clampett cartoons. And I was like, you know, he's exactly copying Tex Avery. So what, what is making this man so special that he deserves a uh, separate disc? But then when I saw Pork in Egypt, I think I got it because uh, at this point, Clement is beginning to do even crazier takes than Tex uh, has done so far, in my opinion. And uh, this might be my favorite Warner Brothers cartoon of all time, actually. The insaneness of wow. the camel in the middle is uh, one of the best acting I've ever seen in an animated short both uh, visually and vocally, completely turns the story on its head and it goes all out on the um, insanity of the camel. I, I actually get goosebumps while watching this camel go insane. You know, you just think, oh, it's it's porky, he's going to the desert, some crazy things happen, but uh, suddenly it's all about the, you know, the, the characters going crazy. And I think it's maybe as wild as porky in Wacky Lane, but this one is the underdog, so I love it more for that. <laughs> so what would I rate this cartoon? You know, this one, yeah, there's practically no story, but damn, it's so funny. This camel character is really, really funny. So, you know, this one is definitely eight and a half out of 10 for me. And it's one of the most entertaining Bob Clampett shorts of this particular period. But that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care. Yeah, and now we're at uh, safe. <laughs> 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 That's all, folks.